Thank you so much, Chairpersons, and a warm welcome to all of you to the city of Indore. Uh, my topic um, is nutrition in type 1 diabetes. So what is type 1? We all know it happens with the primary defect in pancreatic beta cells destruction, usually leading to absolute insulin deficiency and uh, resulting in hyperglycemia, polyuria, polydipsia, polyphagia, weight loss, dehydration, electrolyte disturbance and ketoacidosis. According to ISPAD guidelines, the blood sugars should be maintained between 90 to 130, that is pre-meal and bedtime at 90 to 50, 150. Then there are some complications, as we all know, microvascular and macrovascular. And there are some acute complications like uh, hyperosmolar non-ketotic coma and hypoglycemia, as we were talking in the last talk. So uh, there are certain goals of diabetes management. The overall goal of diabetes management is to achieve as near normal blood glucose values as possible without detriment to quality of life and without causing significant hypoglycemia. Individualized medical nutrition therapy for all and that is why we need to have customized diet plans for each individual having type 1 diabetes. And clinical trials of f have reported decrease in HbA1c at 3 to 6 months ranging from 0.25 to 2.9 percent with higher reduction seen in type 2 diabetes at uh, of shorter duration. Then there are some specific objectives to address individual nutrition needs with a customized approach. Then to achieve and maintain ideal body weight status, to address and control individual glycemic, blood pressure and lipid goals, delay or prevent complications of diabetes, empowering the person having diabetes along with their family members with the right food choices and options to maintain the pleasure of eating, providing practical tools for developing healthy eating patterns and rather than focusing on individual micronutrients or single foods and you know saying something which is like a superfood for type 1, it is not there and emphasizing on nutrient dense rather than calorie dense foods. Then most importantly, emphasizing the importance of chew count, uh, that's carbohydrate count and portion control to achieve good glycemic control, developing a meal plan, so an insulin regime could be integrated into the patient's usual lifestyle. So when we talk about MNT in diabetes, this is the calculation we follow. And up to one year, it is 1000 kilocalories that is denotified as A. And in boys, we give 125 kilocalorie till the age of 12 years. And then to this, we add 200 for the age for 12 to 15 years. Similarly, for girls, it is 1000 kilocalorie for the first year, the child having diabetes at the first year. And up to 12 years, it is A plus 100. And then again, B plus 100. Now we need to calculate how uh, insulin and carb ratio. For insulin carb ratio, it is 450 divided by TDD, that is total daily dose of insulin. So suppose if a patient is on a 40 units of insulin, so the uh, uh, insulin carb ratio will come around 11. So this means one unit of uh, regular insulin is required for 11 grams of carbohydrate or when 11 grams of carbohydrate is eaten, it uh, requires one insulin, uh, one unit insulin is given. When we talk about insulin sensitivity factor, these are certain calculations we make in the diet plan before planning any, you know, snack, midday meal, something like this. Uh, so ISF is for 1500 divided by TDD. That is, we regularly follow. For regular insulin is 1500 and for rapid acting insulin, there's somewhere it is 1700 and somewhere it is 1800 rule. So it is uh, 1500 divided by 40, that comes around 38. This means one unit of regular insulin drops blood glucose by 38. So when a patient comes to us, the first step is to 
identify insulin, carb ratio and ISF. Then preparation of exchange list with 15 grams of carbohydrate. Then identify MNT's principle, provide sample menu and then provide dietary guidelines and patient education tools. So this is one case which we have given as 15 units breakfast, uh, then a regular 10 units for lunch and then 15 for dinner. In this 15 unit is 30-70, that means 4.5 is regular and 10.5 is NPH. So IC ratio is 11. So for 4.5 units of regular, you will need around 50 grams of carbohydrate. So we can give 50 grams of carbohydrate for breakfast and dinner. For lunch, we can give 110 grams of carbohydrate. So how to use ISF in this? Say pre-breakfast sugar is 250 milligrams and expected sugar is 150. So the rise is 100. One unit of regular insulin drops blood glucose by 38. So three units will drop by 114. Morning regular is 4.5 unit. So three unit will be required to drop blood glucose. So food should be somewhere around like 16.5 uh, grams of carbohydrate. So how to use ISF in this scenario? So if pre-breakfast sugar is 90 and expected is 150. Patient is low by how many? 60 milligrams per DL. Insulin unit drops blood glucose by 38 and also one unit is 11 grams of carbohydrate. This means to bring sugar up by 38, uh, you will need 11 grams of carbohydrate. In this case, we have to bring sugar up by 60. So it will be 1.5 and 1.5 when multiplied with 11, it will come up to 16.5 grams of carbohydrate extra. So in breakfast, we can add 16.5 grams of carbohydrate. And for lunch, if uh, it is on premixed insulin, we can increase or decrease the dose based on SMBG and hunger. Then there is one more scenario given with uh, uh, pre-lunch SMBG is 310. So expected sugar is 170. So the raise is by how much? 140. Then four units of uh, that is the ISF. So sugars can be managed by either giving four units more insulin. So dose becomes 14 units and or decreasing carbs by four units that is 44 grams. So this is how a calculation is done between carbohydrate and the insulin. That is the third scenario in which if the sugars are low, that means it is 80 and expected is 170. So it is low by 90. So 90 divided by 38, that is the ISF. It is for two units. So this can be dealt with two ways, either decrease dose by two units. So the new dose is eight units or increase carb by 2 into 11, that is 22 grams. In this case, in this case, I give insulin just before meal, not half an hour before meal. Then the second case we have taken up as glycine insulin, 20 basal and 10, 10, 10, that is Lispror as part, fast acting and that total daily dose is 50 units. So IC ratio will be 500 divided by 50, that comes around 10. And for one unit of bolus insulin, 10 grams of carbohydrate is needed. Or for 10 grams of carbohydrate, we have, sorry. So for 10 grams of carbohydrate, one unit of insulin, ISF will be 1800 uh, divided by 50, that is 36. So one unit of bolus insulin drops blood glucose by 36. So carbohydrate distribution will be 100 grams of carbs in each meal. Plan meals accordingly, uh, providing 100 grams of carbs. If patient with diabetes chooses to eat more or less, adjust the insulin. Then person has a fasting sugar of 350. Expected sugar is 150 in this case. High sugar is by 200. Using ISF, we calculate the extra insulin needed. That comes around 6. So add 6 units of insulin to the patient's meal dose. Remember here, if patient chooses not to eat a breakfast, he, she can just have 6 units, not eat anything. 
if person wants to eat a full breakfast then calculate the carbs and add 6 units to it so th it is the scenario where we can titrate the uh, doses according to the hunger and appetite patients uh, blood glucose is if it is low then expected is uh, say 150 so there is low sugar by 70 decrease in dose of insulin by 2 units and uh, so then the dose will be 8 units so if individual is ready to eat 80 grams of carbohydrates or if less hungry or more hungry you we can adjust the dose of insulin accordingly so when a person is no not physically active if there is no physical activity then uh, if blood sugar is about 250 it will keep on raising so give uh, correction bolus and snack and then if sugar is below 100 milligram then give a snack to get it to expected value of 150 and in this we can give 10 grams of carbohydrate 10 grams of uh, sugar up by 36 so 15 grams will get sugar up by 54 so do blood sugar between his activity and hydrate well and avoid taking uh, insulin on exercising part then we come to the carb counting this is the most important thing one should be knowing before planning any diet for type 1 diabetes so one carb count choice should be 10 to 15 grams of carbohydrate and there are certain examples given for 15 grams of carbs so if a patient is on combination of a long acting and rapid acting uh, insulin analog then mid meal or a bedtime snack is not necessary if on conventional pre make insulin, regular insulin before meal and intermediate acting insulin pre dinner, mid meal and bedtime snack is important. A low carbohydrate diet is uh, that is always recommended for patients on rapid acting insulin. So now I quickly come to the proteins. So proteins is 20% of total energy, and 15 50% of the protein intake should come from high biological value protein, which is shown to have better outcomes as it blunts the glycemic response fats they are also essential and less than 10 percent from pufa less than 7 percent from fatty acids now this is the diabetes food pyramid what we usually follow cereal grains then fruits and vegetables then milk and milk products and then comes your very less uh, usage of fats and sugars so this is a healthy plate having high protein and low carbohydrate. So as you can see, this provides a well-balanced high protein meal if it having a curd a bowl, a bowl of pulses, a bowl of vegetable, 100 gram salad and one chapati gives array of benefits. So it provides 20 grams of protein, approximately 100 grams of carbs and 20 grams of fiber. It would help in meeting the RDA for proteins muscle mitochondria would be activated and hence metabolic rate would increase thereby lesser dose of insulin can be given to maintain blood sugars and would help in maintaining optimal weight ups and downs can be managed by reducing and adding insulin then these are the guidelines what we usually give we should be always educating the patient regarding uh, say uh, insulin injecting techniques then management of hypoglycemia with cups. Thank you for your patient listening.